Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed the sin of men and wrath of God has been on Jesus lay. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. Cross my salvation Where your love poured out over me Now my soul cries out Hallelujah Praise and honor to of heaven God's own son to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree oh that rugged cross my salvation Where your love poured out over me Now my soul cries out Hallelujah Praise and honor to Thee Now my day By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled Now the curse I've seen has no hold on me Whom the sun sets free, oh he's free No hold on me Whom the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed Oh, that rugged cross My salvation Where your love poured out over me And now my soul cries out Thank you.
Well, welcome, Brooke and Matt. So good to have you guys. Thank you for making the time for this. And as we were just saying, I'm so excited to get to talk about this song. So thank you guys. <laughs> Almost a decade on. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm so glad we're getting to it. This is great. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, it's what's really special about this conversation is, you know, usually we talk about songs, you know, before they've released and before they've really had a chance to you know, impact the church and it's really special, I think, to be able to talk about a song um, that's been impacting the church. But talk a little bit about the song. I haven't even heard this story, so I'm excited, you know, to talk about, you know, how you guys wrote this. I mean, as I was saying before, it's been a while, um, and I have, I have a terrible memory at best. Um, I had at least the idea of a chorus um, melody. I feel like I always lean towards melodies more than anything when I'm starting out a new song, so... I rely on my good friends like Brooke and whoever to kind of help me find those lyrics that the song wants to be. But at least it had, I think at the most it had um, oh, that rugged cross, like that was in there. Um, and so from there, at least we had somewhere to build a foundation from. And so I can't remember like how long I had it for. It was probably maybe two or three months. And we, you were still living here, Brookie. You were in, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not far. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I must have shown it to you or something. I can't even remember. But we sat down one day. Oh, we're just writing. Maybe you know what it was. I think it was we were doing the writing retreats and we're at your house. Or was it a team night? It actually was a team night, wasn't it? No, 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 no. The team night okay, one was, was where was... clearly, Jimmy, we've coordinated on this before. <laughs> we did, but, but no, because it was those songs were around the same time. So team night one was when we wrote To Be Like You. That's right. Um, about from Robert Ferguson's message, but I remember this one was, I don't know if it was a writing treat, retreat or what it was, but I have a really vivid memory of us being, you know, in that little granny flat at the back of our house in Sydney. And I remember you coming and you had the chorus or at least most of the chorus. You definitely had all of the chorus melody and definitely, oh, that rugged cross. Um, so I remember you had that. And then I remember you showed me that verse melody. And I mean, there's some writers that are just anointed with melody and you are one of those. So um, mm. there's something about... Um, the, the melodies that God gives Matt that are just, that just evoke are immediately evocative and immediately compelling. And the fact that he already had that, oh, that rugged cross lyric. And then I think also because the melody, um, the movement of it, kind of the lilting nature of it and the fact that there are the number of notes that there are, um, I always get excited when there's a melody like that that has a lot of notes but that isn't distracting, that's accessible because it means, wow, you can really tell a story here. And so because he already had that cross-central theme, um, I think I, I, what I remember is um, us opening Isaiah 53 and, and reading, you know, from, from, from the top, but then we got to verse 3. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And I think the the melody really captured that. So then sometimes the melodies almost inform like what the lyrics should be. And so that's how Man of Sorrows came to be the first line and then the title of the song. And then I think we were just worshipping with it and telling, I think we had to cut verses. I think we had like six or seven verses. We <laughs> cut it down to four verses, which is still a lot. And then I think that bridge kind of came spon spontaneously just as we were, mm. we were worshipping with it. It's just my favourite memory from the whole thing because Brooks just said, there doing a thing and I'm still thinking about some other part of the song and we had kind of looked for something of a bridge and out of nowhere she's like hey what do you think about this and she just starts singing it's the entire bridge pretty much as what it was and she obviously I think that's what I love about songwriting I feel like you work and you work and you work and then it's just like we were talking about earlier Jimmy like God just drops things and I feel like wow. that felt wow. like that moment for me in the song where God was just like here you go You've been working, you've been diligent. So I love that memory of when Brooke brought that for the very first time. I was like, that was special. So. Yeah, that's really special. You know, this song is, you know, it's just, it, it's so incredible. And um, you guys have just done such an amazing job with it. And um, I think it's one of those songs that's just going to live on, you know, for years in the church. It really does have that timeless feel. I don't know if you felt that when you, when you were writing it. You're like, man, this feels like it could be, could have been sung, you know, 150 years ago as well as today. Yeah, I don't think we were, we weren't kind of 
that wasn't the goal of it, it was to write like any hymn or anything like that um i know for me like it's rare that i'm trying to aim at something like that i feel like the melody just lent itself towards that and everything kind of fell into place from there but um i do i mean i love i i sh- find it easy to write the intricate kind of more weird stuff whereas when something that is so accessible and so um perfect for a congregational setting when there's a lot of people in there um or a small gathering whatever it is it's just a group of people singing a song and if it's something that connects with everyone that's that's amazing so yeah it's so good well i'm so glad we finally got to talk about this song after eight years brooke and so <laughs> And so, and I'm glad you guys are doing a, you know, kind of doing a new version as well. It's going to be exciting yeah. uh, for the church, and you know, we're super thankful to be a part of that. So, thank you guys for taking the time awesome. to talk about it and to join thank us today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love what you do. Thank you. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation.